who observed the Earth from satellite orbit 10,000 years ago. Welcome to the Eye of Truth. I'm sure you all know the word Uparts. It refers to things that don't make sense for the civilization of the time, things that could not be invented or developed using the technology of that time. A golden jet from ancient Egypt, a blueprint for the Vamana from ancient India, and the Baghdad battery excavated near Baghdad. These are known as the most famous examples of Uparts. Three recently discovered ancient maps may surpass the level of these Uparts and overturn the history of mankind. Now, let's look at the first ancient map that shouldn't exist. Aronsa Fine's map. This map was drawn in 1531 by Aronsa Fine, a French mathematician and astronomer. This map summarizes the topography of each continent, centering on Antarctica and the North Pole. Some people might notice a problem with this because modern humans first learned of the existence of Antarctica in 1820. It all started when three British, American, and Russian explorers each discovered a mass of ice in a remote corner of Antarctica. It wasn't until decades later that land was discovered beneath the ice. So, it is very strange that Antarctica is so clearly depicted on this map, which was completed in 1531. In ancient Europe, there was a legend about an unknown giant continent in the southern hemisphere. So it's possible that Fine drew this map based on the continent from the legend. However, a note left by Fine ruled out this possibility. According to the note, he drew this map using several ancient maps from his time as references. This is interesting, and we'll talk more about it later. But first, let's take a closer look at this map. The shapes of the continents of Africa and South America and the country of Madagascar around Antarctica are highly consistent with modern maps. However, when compared to the areas of other continents, the area of Antarctica on Fine's map is drawn about twice as large as Antarctica on modern maps. After all, Fine was influenced by the lore of the large mystery continent passed down in ancient Europe. Did this create Fine's delusion of a giant Antarctica? It may be too early to say. Let's pause this thought and compare the shape of Fine's Antarctica against that on a modern map. As you can see, both consist of a large part on the east side and a small part on the west side. The outer part of the eastern side is arc-shaped, and there is a large dent in about one-fourth of it. The endpoints of both arcs are also found at approximately 90 degrees. If you take a closer look, you can find many similar shapes. Of course, there are differences as well. For example, this part of the modern map is not on Fine's map. Although there are some differences in area and shape, they have many similar details, so it's not totally possible to say that this map was created by just delusion or legend, right? As I mentioned earlier, this map was drawn by Fine with reference to several ancient maps of his time. It is quite possible that mistakes occurred during transcription from these ancient maps. Also, apart from the topography, there is another big mystery lurking within this map. The Antarctic continent on Fine's map is not covered with ice. In addition, the shape of the mountain range is drawn. According to modern research, Antarctica was gradually covered with ice and became the icy continent it is today about 6,000 years ago. So, if this map is really based on ancient maps, there is a possibility that those ancient maps depict the Earth before 6,000 years ago. At that time, humans did not even use letters yet. So who made a world map like this? The answer is explored at the end of the video. Now, let's take a look at a second ancient map. Map of the Whole World In 2006, the British magazine The Economist published the article China Beat Columbus to It. Perhaps, in this article, another mysterious map was introduced. The map became known to the world in 2001 when it was shown at an antique market in Shanghai, China, for the price of $500. Since the contents drawn on it were so bizarre, it became the target of various investigations and studies. The following information can be found in the author's notes on the map. The map was completed in 1763 and the content depicted is a copy of a single ancient map created in 1418. Please listen to the following while remembering the year 1418. 
This Chinese map shows the topography of the continents Asia, Europe, Africa, North America, South America, and even Antarctica, as well as oceans that are thought to be the Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, and Atlantic Ocean. Many of the features depicted predate the official history of Antarctica, as well as others, by hundreds of years. During this time, ancient China had a cosmological view called Heaven is Round, Earth is Square. This meant that at the time, China believed the heavens were round and the Earth was flat, but this map clearly shows the round shape of the Earth. The map was so unconventional that it was thought to be a modern imitation. The owner of the map requested the University of Waikato in New Zealand to conduct a radiocarbon dating of the material contained in the map through the introduction of a researcher from Cambridge University. As a result of the measurement, it was surmised that both the paper and ink of the map were indeed from the 18th century. This result attracted a great deal of attention, and scholars began to study the map again. However, most researchers believe that even though the paper and ink were determined to be from the 18th century, the content depicted on the map was not necessarily created at the same time. Because if you have 18th century paper and ink, you can create fake ancient maps like this one. The debate surrounding this map is ongoing. In my opinion, what's on the map certainly looks too modern when viewed as a standalone example. But when you compare it to Fide's map, you can find some similarities. Both maps depict Antarctica and were drawn using references of ancient maps from much older eras. The third map, which I'll introduce next, does as well. Piri Reis Map The Piri Reis Map is rather famous, so some of you may know it. This map was created in 1513 by the Ottoman Admiral Piri Reis and is now kept in the Topkapi Palace in Istanbul. Over half of the actual item has been lost, but you can still see a surprising amount of content. First off, the author's notes state that the map was drawn using 20 ancient maps as references. The right part of the map shows the southwest coast of Africa, and the bottom left shows the east coast of South America. However, the terrain depicted at the bottom of the map has long remained a mystery, as it does not coincide with any known coastlines. Professor Charles Hapgood is an archaeology expert who has studied this map. He hypothesized that the curious coastline is the coastline of Princess Martha Beach in Antarctica. However, Princess Martha Beach is covered in 1,600 meters of ice, and it was thanks to remote sensing technology that we learned the shape of this coastline. There is no way that ancient humans without the proper research tools would be able to know the shape of the coastline. But it was worth investigating, so Professor Hapgood asked his friend Colonel Harold Olmeyer of the United States Air Force about his hypothesis. Colonel Olmeyer replied, The geographical detail shown in the lower part of the map agrees very remarkably with the results of the seismic profile made across the top of the ice cap by the Swedish-British Antarctic Expedition of 1949. This raises the possibility that Professor Hapgood's hypothesis is correct. Furthermore, another puzzling fact was discovered in later research. The terrain depicted on this map is slightly distorted. This kind of distortion is very similar to the kind produced by the Azimuthal Equidistant Projection a projection used in modern maps. In other words, the map is similar to the way modern maps may become distorted during their creation using observation data from the sky. As I mentioned, this map was drawn by Rees in 1513 using 20 ancient maps as references. This means that the ancient map references may have been created using observational results from the sky. The US Air Force once made a world map centered on Cairo, the capital of Egypt using data collected in the air. Comparing the two, I found that they are very similar. However, the length of the South American continent on Admiral Reese's map is slightly shorter than on the U.S. Air Force map. This suggests that the ancient maps Admiral Reese referred to used observation data collected from higher altitudes than the U.S. Air Force data. If this is true, what location would be higher than a U.S. Air Force plane? A clear source has not been found. I don't know how credible it is, but the distortion and position of each continent in the image of the Earth taken by a satellite is like the distortion seen in Admiral Reese's map. It seems to match the position and altitude. 
Did someone observe the Earth from Earth's satellite orbit in super ancient times? It's a strange question, but I think the possibility is not zero. Now it's time for my personal speculations. From various research results, the emergence of civilization officially defined as civilization occurred about 6,000 years ago. It may be just a coincidence, but as I mentioned earlier, Antarctica was completely covered with ice about 6,000 years ago. Combined with the existence of these ancient maps, it is possible that at some point in the last 6,000 years, one major event occurred – the change of civilization. In other words, an ancient civilization as advanced as our current civilization level disappeared from the surface of the Earth 6,000 years ago, and we humans appeared shortly after that. However, we started from zero without inheriting anything from this preceding civilization. As for the reason why the advanced civilization disappeared, I will touch on it in a future video. Thank you for watching.